Competition is a fantastic thing because it keeps manufacturers honest. It sees them pushing the envelope to bring out new technologies and better products, which means for you and I as consumers, we're smiling because we're getting better cars to drive and usually it keeps the pricing fairly competitive. Now in South Africa, Toyota's pretty much been like the All Blacks. They've just been dominant. No one can really compete with them month to month. Until Ford came along with the Ranger and things started changing. But there is one car that they still sell by the thousands. Unchallenged, the Toyota Fortuna. Until now, with a Ford Everest. Game on. We never really had any issues with the old Everest. Sure, it was a bit cumbersome, some of the controls were slightly clunky and the engine was, shall we say, agricultural. Nevertheless, it possessed a certain honesty that was rather refreshing. While other manufacturers try to carry over styling cues between successive models, the new Everest represents such a big departure from the old one that it's hardly recognisable as an Everest at all. There are unashamed nods to Ford's Raptor pickup, and while it oozes on-road presence, only time will tell if South African buyers will take to the Everest's American looks. Thanks to its rudimentary bucky underpinnings, the previous generation Everest was most at home on dirt. The new model is every bit as adept at mud plugging, even though it employs a much more sophisticated suspension system. But more about that later. We see so many SUVs on our roads in SA. And we also know that most of them, that's pretty much where they stay. All this 4x4 technology and they never ever leave the tar road. So you'd imagine a lot of manufacturers might be focusing on the more lifestyle orientation of their SUVs. Not so Ford with their third generation Everest. For them, this car is all about being able to go anywhere and everywhere. So to be taken seriously in the 4x4 world, you need to have all the right credentials. 225mm ground clearance is really good, but it's the 800mm wading depth that is class leading, and that's without even a snorkel, so that is super impressive. But it's also about being able to mount over obstacles, so with a 29 degree approach angle, uh, 25 on the departure, and a ramp over angle of 21, your Everest is pretty well equipped to handle anything that comes its way. Like all modern serious 4x4s, it comes with an all-terrain system that you can switch on the fly. It's got four modes and very clever, like they all work, controlling torque and traction and obviously optimizing it depending on the mode you're in and the terrain. So as an example, if uh, we were in sand, what you want is higher revs, so you want it to hold on to the gears, you want your accelerator to be more responsive, and that is what it will immediately do. Whereas when you're getting into snow or wet grass or any slippery conditions, the last thing you want is wheel spin, so that obviously works with traction and torque to uh, ensure that you've got optimized grip at all times. So that's what that all-terrain system is doing. But also very important, you've got low range, you've got high range, and you've got an electronic lockable rear diff. So seriously, this Everest has plenty of credentials. We literally have been everywhere, seen it all, and driven on every type of road surface you can imagine. And Everest has been really impressive. It's the on-road for me that I've really enjoyed. I, I can't understand why we see so many of these type of converted buckies on our roads because they've got the terrible leaf spring suspension at the rear. They feel unsafe and they're terrible to drive. Not so with the new Everest and it's got a lot to do with the Watts linkage system that's running. It works fantastically well. You've seen our capabilities off-road as well. So this Everest literally is going to take you anywhere you want it to go. Engine-wise, 3.2 litre turbo diesel, which we do know, 147 kilowatts, 407 newton meters, that's got plenty. What is interesting, I mean, we've seen what Ranger has done from a sales perspective in South Africa. It's the number one selling bucket, it's taken the fight to Toyota. The man in charge of Ranger is also in charge of the Everest project. And you can see it from a styling point of view, you're gonna love what you're gonna see. From an interior perspective, that was the best part for me because they've simplified it. I've always complained that Fords can be a little bit busy, very clean, very nicely laid out, very simplified, and that is what your new Ranger will look like when it comes out. If there's something yank-like about the exterior, the interior is definitely Eurocentric. 
From the materials used to the overall design, the Everest's cavern looks as though it skipped two generations of development. In this range-topping model, almost every surface is covered in soft leather, while rear passengers get their own set of climate controls and there's even a power-operated tailgate. They talk about all the chrome detailing because it's to show the refinement and that balance between macho and rugged and sophisticated and upmarket. Yeah, it works for me. I'm not really too crazy about chrome and there is a lot of chrome on your Everest. Pricing, quite interesting. Ford said to us, no, no, don't compare this to Fortuna compare this to Prado. Yeah, I think that's to help us just swallow that big price tag. Driving in it, yes, it's got seven seats, some fantastic touches, the third row push of the button, they drop down, very, very nice. Just over 2,000 liters when you drop the second and third row, it's a big car. It's a lot bigger than the old Everest. Is it a Prado? It doesn't quite feel that way. That brings me to that price. So we're in the limited edition, the top spec just under 650,000 Rand, not many options to choose from. And then if you go for the XLT, that's gonna set you back just under 600,000 Rand. What I do think Ford needs to do, and needs to do it very quickly, is bring that 2.2 litre as the entry level Everest, because I think that'll be a price point that'll appeal to a lot more South Africans.